Well, I normally do the reveal at the end of the um, tape, but I thought this bull has been amazing. It literally tried to jump off the lathe probably four times, oh, probably at least four times. Certain precautions kept that from actually happening. Um, it's, um, it's walnut with purple heart and oak and a turquoise uh, inlay around the top of it. Turned out really good. Um, it's pretty interesting and it has quite a story that you'll see in the video. I uh, hope you stick around and watch. Um, it turned out it turned out pretty darn good. I'll uh, I didn't know what to say about this bull. I learned a lot on this bull. I aligned the grain across from each other. For example, uh, to show you, the purple heart and oak are cutting 90 degrees to the walnut. The walnut grain runs this way and the other grain runs this way. And that produced a whole bunch of problems that I wasn't really ready for. Um, the way the uh, chisel interacted with the uh, interacts with the hardwoods and the different grains and uh, the different hardnesses um, was kind of a kind of an eye-opener and I and I uh, uh, and I learned a lot anyway that all being said let's just go ahead and get into the video here we go it's gonna be Walnut, oak, and purple heart. And uh, I hope it's going to be cool. I think it's going to be fine, but I, I hope it's, really hope it's going to be cool. And I All right, what are we going to name this? It's uh, we got walnut, oak, purple heart, oak, walnut, and and this is the same piece. If you can see, I lined up the grain as best as I could. This is going to be the top because the bottom side has this real interesting. Oh, that has a nasty little crack right there. Hmm, I think we're going to do something about that before we go any further. You can't go wrong if you dump a little glue in there now. Because you're going to turn most of that away. So if it sinks in or stains, it's just going to enhance the whole show. I think. Oh, you can see that. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's following that crack. It goes all the way to there. Hmm. No big deal. Now it also has a, I think it has a yucky spot on it here somewhere. Maybe I cut it all out. Oh yeah, there's a knot right there. Let's go ahead and dump some stuff in that knot. There we go. Let that sink in there for a minute. 
Yep. Alrighty then. Now we got to find the middle of this thing, and there's eight million ways to find the middle of something, but with something like this, I know I want this a little bit off center, and I'm pretty sure I got it a little bit off center. There's ten and three quarters, so there's there's ten and three eighths. I guess I don't have it all that far off. And we got over here ten and three quarters. There's ten and three eighths right there. I guess it's just slightly off center. Maybe I should go to move it over to center. I think I'm just gonna move it right over to the center. More centered. Right there. I think that's the way I'll do it. I didn't want to go that way, but that's the way I wanted. That's the way it's gonna go. Right, so normally this would not happen um, if it was just the walnut or just the oak or just the purple heart. It's the way the woods interact with each other that's causing the problem. So you can see that this turning this post out of the center of the bowl is uh, basically cutting on a huge lever. Um, and once it gets a little micro wobble in it, before you can react, the angle of attack on the blade turns it into um, just a huge gouge. And uh, 
fortunately that um, properly cut tenon saved the day. At this point, I decided to switch from uh, a, a regular bowl gouge to a uh, carbide tipped gouge. And this is a fairly large carbide tip gouge, um, so it's probably a little bigger than I should have had, but it's the only one. I, well, I only have two. So this is the one I was using, and I thought that I had it figured out, but maybe not quite. So at this point, I decided to go to um, my smallest cutting carbide cutter that I have, and it's on my hollowing tool, which is probably not the right tool for this job, but it's the one that I can get it done with. So that was my choice. So after a trip to the woodworker store, I uh, uh, talked to the to the store owner there, and he mentioned a negative angle, a negative rake cutting tip for my carbide cutter, and I got that, and uh, that resolved a whole lot of the catching issues, um, and it does a real clean job of uh, cleaning out that inside of that bowl. Um, yep, that turned out good so far. So here you can see I'm using the um, hollowing tool with the small cutting head on it to uh, finish off that tab. I would have shown you more, but I was a little bit frustrated. So uh, I just wanted it to work and not catch anymore. And I, I was tired of showing you. <laughs> so anyway, it uh, the smaller tool worked good for cutting out that post. And uh, um, the this is pretty much uh, the completion of the rough out portion. Okay, so I got this piece off the lathe and uh, it turned out pretty well. I think I still need to go a little bit deeper here because it's kind of thick. And then I didn't get this part 
filmed for you because uh, it was kind of the spur of the moment, end of the day, and I was tired. Uh, but to fill you in on how that happened is I have this little bag of turquoise uh, that I got online. I don't remember what I paid for it, but it's a little bag of turquoise. And I have this coffee grinder, uh, just a regular old coffee grinder, and it's got the it's the blade type, not the burr type. And and I don't know if a burr type or this type works any better one way or the other, but this is the type I used. And I put some of this in there and ground it up and then dumped it in here and used this to spoon it in and then just kind of screeded it out and patted it down with my fingers and then I used uh, thin CA and I pretty much filled this all up you can see that it's stained with CA around the edges um, so my next step is to get this back on the lathe and we'll get this sanded down and maybe do a little bit more uh, turning on the inside of this and remember all that catching that just went on in this thing? Well, I think I have a remedy for that. Uh, I got a I got a new carbide bit. It's a uh, it's a um, negative rake carbide bit. So we're gonna try that out and see how it works. And uh, yeah, we'll get this on the lathe and we'll get get moving forward again. So I have an 80 grit disc here. We'll fit all the way over this, and we'll sand it down that way. Well, I'm going to put a mask and face shield on. Am I recording yet? So you didn't get the demonstration earlier, but now you get the demonstration later. Here's how I did it. And it's uh, not too complicated. Now, uh, I sanded this down. I've used up three full sheets of 80 grit sandpaper getting this sanded down. And uh, there's still some voids in it right on the edges here. I want to fill those up. And uh, I don't know, maybe that's being too perfectionist, but I don't know. So I want to fill those empty voids so that it's all smooth like this right here. And then the, and then it, and then the stone will be polished. The, so that's, that's the effect I want. Now let's see if, the, if it's the effect I get. So here's the way I'm going to do it. I'll take a few stones here. And, Put them in the grinder. I'm going to put a fair amount of few in there. Find me some electricities. I got a I got a cord out of it. So yeah, I, I I put I put quite a bit more uh, stones in there. And it got bashed around a whole lot better, I think. Well, we'll see how good this is. And I'll just hold this up over here and we'll dump our little pebbles through. Oh yeah, that got, got pretty fine. So we'll just shake that through. And then we'll dump the rest of it right back in our little bag. And they'll be ready to bash up some other ones at another time. I suppose I could uh, separate these out a little bit more, but um, so then I'll do the gold pan and thing, and I'll kind of get the finer stuff and the heavy stuff a little bit separated. I'm just going to put the heavier stuff right in here. I don't need very much heavy. I need mostly just light, fine stuff. And 
and there's all my heavy stuff. See all the heavy stuff is on one side. And if I had a finer screen, I'd just run it through a finer screen, but that's what I got. That's what I could get at the second-hand store. So then I can take these little, uh, little bitty things here. When I filled it up, I used this. So now all I'm going to do is take my little fine particles and spread them around were they to fill in where what wasn't filled in so i can just take this here and kind of push them around a little bit i might even be able to push them around better with my finger i don't know So I don't know, what do you think? Is that a good way to do it? I have no idea. They used to make floors like this back in my construction days. Only they'd use, I mean, I've seen them use all kinds of stuff, glass. Take glass and then they polish it with diamond cutters, diamond uh, um, polishers. Makes a really cool effect. I think that's going to look a lot better. Just a wee bit more right here. Now the question is, how do I apply that? How do I apply that glue, that CA glue, in such a fine, fine fashion there? I think that's going to look pretty cool. What do you think? There, just like a cement finisher would do it. Okay, now how do I get the glue on? The thing is, I can't see where I put the glue, where I put the stuff, and where I didn't. So I guess we'll just have to smear it all over everything. Let's see if that rag will smear it out there a little bit. Kind of like that, what do you think? I think that looks okay. Let's put some more on there. And this is what I didn't want to do, but looks like I'm going to have it done anyway. Looks like it's going to happen anyway. Well, we'll just sand it off again. Simple as that. Simple as that. All we were going to do is just get that into the, get that fine particles stuck into the, yeah. I 
I think that's gonna look really good. All right, here we go with the negative rake carbide cutter. There's a good look at it when it's mounted. You can kind of see the negative rake angle on there. So, 800, and we'll just start right here. Let's see if we can smooth things out. So far, so good. I'm going real light with that and I'm not feeling any drag so so far so good Okay, so we're mounted up back in the lathe, ready to sand, and we're going to sand from, oh, we'll probably, uh, I'll probably use 80, 80 around where we patched, the, where we made those little patches and knock it down real quick with that, and then we're going to run all the way up to probably 600 on this, and, and uh, yeah, and we'll see how it turns out. I think it's going to be wonderful, but you won't see me until it's time to put the finishes on. Well, here we are. We're down to it now. We got uh, all that sanded done. I think it was about three or four hours ago I turned this off and I sanded this all the way down to 400. Okay, so this is what I'm using. Um, I still not going to say I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm not not a fan, but I'm not a fan either. It, it, it's a uh, it's challenging. We'll just go that far. So, I'm going to get this opened up and I'm going to brush on a one coat and as thin of a coat as I can get away with. And then we'll sand her back down to 400 after it sets up. One coat done. So, here I'm applying the last coat. I think it's the last coat of uh um, wood bowl turners finish. Um, it's uh, it's a good product. I like that. Goes on pretty easy. Anyway, I'm not going to bother you with too much of this. I'll just uh, we'll just get on to the next segment. Okay, it's time to part the it's time to part the tab off the back side of this thing. So we're going to put this guy in here. that all down there and 
I have uh, soft cloth inside the bowl. And we're going to put that in here. And we'll bring up the tailstock. Put that right on there. Give it a little push. And unlock this guy. It turns. That's a good thing. I think I'm going to have to put another coat of that bowl finish on the outside of this, but I don't need that to be on the lathe to do that. It's time to get this finished so I can get on to the next project. You know, I don't know if y'all get like that, but I do. So, this is that really hard part of the wood, too. Um, yeah, we'll see what, how we do. We'll just go slow. And we're going to go turn that on. And now we're going to turn it off again because it's in reverse. There, yeah, we'll put it that way. And we'll turn it on. And we're going to put it Got a little wobble to it, but I think we're going to be okay. I'm thinking we're going to be just fine with it. And we might let's fiddle with it just a little bit. Okay, there's the closest place. So I think we can just push it that way just a little bit. There. Yeah. I think it's fine. We're going with it. I'm going to turn the speed up to about, I don't know, six, seven, eight hundred maybe. Seven hundred. And we're just going to go nice and slow. wasn't good. Well, it wasn't that exciting. Um, I was able to regroup and uh, there was no serious damage. Uh, fortunately, I had the towel on the inside there. or uh, Actually, it was an old sheet, sheet material. Um, uh, it didn't do anything to the inside of it. No scratches or sketches, just a couple scuffs that rubbed right out. And then uh, uh, on the back side, it made a, the quill made a couple of uh, um, pock marks on it, but I was able to turn, easily turn them out. And there was a couple of chips on the edges, but also I had plenty of room on this pedestal to fix that. And uh, yeah, so here it is. This is the, uh, the uh, I still don't know what to call this. I guess I'll, 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 I'll end up naming it something, but I don't quite know what. Uh, I think it's beautiful. I think it turned out great. I, um, yeah, I, uh, I'm pretty proud of it. Um, I got the, the logo on the back and it's numbered and got my signature on it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased. I'm, I'm happy with it. So on that note, if you like the video, please, please subscribe. Um, it, uh, it helps me out quite a bit. Uh, if you like the video, share it with your friends. Um, yeah. Um, Stay tuned, more coming. I think we got, uh, I think we're gonna do an Easter egg um, for the next video, being as it's Easter week. Um, yep, uh, like and share. Thanks for watching.